So please take one and read it. It also it's got a lot of information on it. I can't quite read it because my glasses won't focus here. But um, it lists a lot of stuff we're doing and just gives you a little reminder, put it in your refrigerator to start passing the word about what we're trying to do here. Part of the things we're trying to do here is decorate the family Christmas tree in the back of the sanctuary, uh, asking you to please bring in an ornament for, of your family for our family tree. There's stockings in the back. They're due here next Sunday, December the 5th, to be delivered. This is my favorite one here. The nut orders are in, and they're in the library, along with the extra nuts and candy to buy. Now, I'm not for sale. Everybody knows I'm a nut, but I'm already taken. Any, uh, also, wow, all kinds of stuff, of food here. Anyone interested in making cookies for the next community dinner in December, please see or get a hold of Heidi, of course. Uh, there will also be a sign-up sheet next week. I think that's it all I have for announcements. Anybody else? If not... Star service. Uh, if you could please stand and join me in a call to worship. The day foretold is coming. When our tired eyes behold a raising star in the eastern sky. The one foretold is coming. The day is at hand. The Savior draws near. Please stay standing while we sing our opening hymn. together in the opening prayer. 
O God of the coming one, we lift up our eyes, we lift up our souls in expectation. We trust, we will not be afraid, for you have promised to send us a shepherd to reveal your paths and a teacher to show your ways. We are mindful of our cruelty, Lord, so be mindful of your mercy and send your shepherd soon. We are mindful of your spitefulness, so be mindful of your steadfast love and dispatch your teacher here. For as we look upon your faithful servant, we will see your shiny face. As we gaze into your steady eyes, we shall behold the image of our own. Amen. Please be seated. Matthew 24, verse 44. So you, must, so you also must be ready, because the Son of Man will come at an hour when you do not expect him. It was Jesus Christ himself that told us to be ready at any time. So today we remember that call, the call to look for God in un unexpected places, at unexpected times. And even though we wait, we can expect our Savior to show and to be that hope that we long for. This morning we light the first purple candle to represent the hope that we find in Jesus Christ. Let this fire remind us that while we wait for the Lord, truly the Lord is already here. Hope is here. Love is here. Family is here. And we pray, everlasting God, we confess that we haven't been watching. We haven't been looking out for you. Life, like a thief in the night, you could pass us by and we would never know. We have forgotten to look for you in the faces of our children, of the homeless around us, in the immigrants who struggle as they serve even us. Forgive us, we pray and make us ready to greet you in everyone we see on the street as we leave this place today. Amen.
Hello again, girls. Y'all good? All right. Have you ever seen this kind of book before in Nancy Drew Mysteries? Well, it's a mystery book, but inside the mystery book are detectives and things like that as well. So I wanted to play a game with you this morning. I know you girls like to play games. Um, let's play I Spy. Okay? So I spy with my little eyes something green. Could be the trees. What else? What's that? Flowers. Okay. No. Something over this way. You see something else? Advent ring. Okay. I spy with my little eyes something purple. All right. And a skull. What else? Right? That's a called pyramid. What else? Advent candles, okay. <laughs> so it's something different, right? We don't usually see these up all year long in the church, do we? No, it's something special. So I wonder, when you come into church next week, if there will be something even more special. So we got to kind of be like detectives when we come into church to see what's different. Because Christmas is actually, or the Advent's beginning of the church year. So it's something new, something fresh. It's something that's about to change, something about to happen. So why, why do we celebrate Advent? What are we waiting for? Christmas? What's Christmas? You know? Right, Jesus' birth. So we, we anticipate, we expect, right? Expectations. We wait for, have four weeks to wait for that beautiful, glorious day when we can celebrate Jesus' birth once again. Now, so after Advent is, you know, we go back to, well, there's Epiphany, and then we go back to the regular church calendar year. But Christmas is the beginning of the church year. So it's something different, something that we get to look forward to. Expect wonderful things to happen, okay? So, so when you come into church, act like a detective. Try to figure out what's different in the church the next time. Because there's pyramids, there's purple cloths up there, you may not be there. They'll be a different color. So when you come into the church, see what color they are, okay? But for four weeks, they're going to be that color, okay? Just a hint. All right, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you for the anticipation, for the expectation, for the changes that occur throughout the year, but more importantly, Lord, we, we celebrate and we expect wonderful things to happen during this Advent time. So, Lord, help us to put our hope in you this day because that's what the first candle is about, is about hope. And we put our hope in you. So, Lord, help us to trust in you that we can um, put our hope in you and that you would show us marvelous, wonderful things in our lives. For it's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Okay, thanks, girls, for coming up. Chapter 33, there we go, uh, verses 14 through 16. The days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will fulfill the good promise I have made to the people of Israel and Judah. In those days and at that time, I will make a righteous branch sprout from David's line. He will do what is just and right in the land. In those days, Judah will be saved and Jerusalem Jerusalem will live in safety. This is the name by which it will be called, the Lord, our righteous Savior. Our second reading 
is from the Gospel, Luke chapter 21, verses 25 through 36. If you could please stand for this reading. There will be signs in the sun, moon, and stars. On the earth, nations will be in anguish and in perplexity at the roaring and tossing of the sea. People will faint from terror, apprehensive of what is coming on the world, for the heavenly bodies will be shaken. At the time, they will see the Son of Man coming in the cloud with power and great glory. When these things begin, begin to take place, stand up and lift up your heads because your redemption is drawing near. He told them this parable. Look at the fig tree and all the trees. When they sprout leaves, you can see for yourselves and know that summer is near. Even so, when you see these, when you see these things happening, you know that the kingdom of God is near. Truly, I tell you, this generation will certainly not pass away until all these things have happened. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will never pass away. The word of God for the people of God. Please be seated. Let us go to the Lord in prayer this morning. Most precious and holy God, we give you thanks for being with us this day. And Lord, we just ask that you would open our eyes and our hearts to your words this morning, that what is spoken may be pleasing in your sight. Amen. So Black Friday, Small Business Saturday, Cyber Monday. Wow. What an overwhelming indication that Christmas is fast approaching. Now that the Thanksgiving holiday is over, how many of you can say that you are ready for Christmas? Your decorations are up, your cookies are baked, your presents are bought, and so on. Anybody? I didn't think so, but thought I'd ask anyway. Well, some, some people may say that they are ready, but I wonder about the rest of us. What's keeping you from getting ready? Well, maybe you have work to do. Maybe you have to babysit the grandchildren. Or maybe you have to pay your bills before even thinking about going shopping. But is this all that it means to get ready for Christmas? To get ready for Christ to come into our world once again? Apparently it is for some. But what about you? Signs are everywhere telling us that something big is about to happen and we better wake up. But what signs are you paying attention to? The signs that there will be a 75% off this weekend? Or buy one, get one free? Are these the things that motivate you during this time of Advent? You know, what started out as a season of hope and promise and joy has turned into a time of stress, traffic jams, and shopping lists. And when it's all over, many of us are left with presents that need to be returned, looming bills that will take us months to pay off, and this empty feeling that suggests that perhaps we missed something. Is this what we want to experience this season? You know, it's not surprising, or maybe it is, to you to know that 43% of the population, that is one half of adults, suffer from adverse, and bus adverse health due to stress. So all this hustle and bustle of getting ready, is it truly worth it? When we allow the secular world 
to take over our lives. We are not ready for Christmas, nor are we ready for Jesus. Advent, a season in which we remember that we are a people of hope. We are Christmas people. The first Sunday of Advent is a special time set aside in the Christian calendar to slow down for reflection. We need to put away all those things that draw us away from being in a relationship with our God and being drawn to the hope that is found in God's Son, Jesus Christ. Now, I realize for some of you that this time of year may cause you to reflect upon your relationships that you had with loved ones who have now passed on or cause you to realize that you may not be able to spend time with the loved ones because they live too far away. I want you to have hope, to know that you are not alone. You know, we sing that song, Emmanuel, which means God with us. God is always with us. And Advent reminds us that we're not alone. In the midst of tragedy, in the midst of war, and of rumors of war, in the midst of oppression and poverty, even in the midst of our own personal losses, we can raise our heads and look out for the Lord because he is near to us, as it was read this morning. You know, Jesus doesn't want us to be downcast dejected or low in spirit, but to look up in joy, in hope, and in trust. But are you ready for that? How prepared are you ready for Jesus to come? If Jesus were come were to come today, would you be ready? Would he, would he enter your life unexpectedly? How does preparing for him affect your life individually? Well, people in Jesus' time were fearful about the uncertainty of times as well. And today's scripture begins sounding like it came right from this week's news headlines. Amazing things will happen to the sun and to the moon and to the stars. On earth, nations will be afraid because of the roar and fury of the sea. The sea, or the roaring of the sea, is mentioned in Isaiah chapter 17, verse 12. And the sea often symbolizes chaos or stands for a source of fear. These people will not know what to do. People will be so afraid that they will faint. They will wonder what is happening in the whole world. Does that sound familiar? People do not know if they can feel safe in their own communities or in public places. People worry about the safety of their children. You know, there's a greater sense of fear lurking in our minds as we live our daily lives today and add fearfulness to the stresses of our already fast-paced lifestyle. And we can identify with what Jesus was talking about in the Gospel of Luke. We might think, what if it lands on my doorstep? What if? What well, Jesus is saying, well, what if? When these things begin to take place, stand up and lift up your heads because the redemption is drawing near. The time when God will free you is near. People tend to ask if we are ready for Christmas. And we respond, well, not yet. There's shopping to be done, decorations to put up, and so on. 
Well, Christmas is coming, whether or not you are ready. The days go by and the events unfold. You know, Jesus said he would come back, and these events have been unfolding throughout history. One day he will appear. We don't have to be fearful, however, if we are ready. He doesn't leave us at that fear stage. He gives us instructions as to what we need to do. He basically says, hey, be ready. As the Bible translation says, but be on your guard. Don't let the sharp edge of your expectation get dulled by parties and drinking and shopping. Otherwise, that day is going to take you by complete surprise. Spring in on you suddenly like a trap, for it's going to come on everyone, everywhere at once. So whatever you do, don't go to sleep at the switch. Pray constantly that you will have the strength and the wits to make it through and end up on your feet before the Son of Man. Or better yet, as the NIV translation says, be careful or your hearts will be weighed down by the anxieties of life. I want you to listen to this story of a person or a duck named Wally by an unknown author called The Call of the Barnyard and it goes like this. A flock of wild ducks were flying in formation, heading south for the winter. They formed a beautiful V in the sky and were admired by everyone who saw them from below. One day, Wally, one of the wild ducks in the formation, spotted something on the ground that caught his eye. It was a barnyard with a flock of tame ducks who lived on the farm. They were waddling around on the ground, quacking merrily and eating corn that was thrown on the ground for them every day. Wally liked what he saw. It sure would be nice to have some of that corn, he thought to himself. And all this flying is very tiring. I'd just like to waddle around for a while. So after thinking it over, Wally left the formation of the wild ducks, made a sharp dive to the left, and headed for the barnyard. He headed among the tame ducks and began to waddle around and quack merrily. He also started to eat the corn. The formation of the wild ducks continued their journey south, but Wally didn't care. I'll rejoin them when they come back this way in a few months, he said to himself. Well, several months went by, and sure enough, Wally looked up and spotted the flock of wild ducks in the formation heading north. They looked beautiful up there, and Wally was tired of the barnyard. It was muddy, and everywhere he waddled, nothing but duck do. It's time to leave, said Wally. So Wally flapped his wings furiously and tried to get airborne, but he had gained some weight from all of his corn eating. He hadn't exercised his wings much either. He finally got off the ground, but he was flying too low and slammed into the side of the barn. He fell to the ground with a thud and said to himself, Oh, well, I'll just wait until they fly south in a few months. Then I'll rejoin them and become a wild duck again. But when the flock flew overhead once more, Wally tr again tried to lift himself out of the barnyard. He simply did not have the strength. Every winter and every spring, he saw his wild duck friends flying overhead, and they would call out to him, but his attempts to leave were all in vain. Eventually, no longer paid attention to the wild ducks flying overhead. He hardly even noticed them. He had, after all, become a barnyard duck. You know, sometimes we get tired of being wild ducks, followers of Jesus Christ. It's not always easy to be obedient to God and to discipline ourselves to hang in there for the long haul. When we are feeling that way, that's when Satan tempts us to fall out of formation and join the barnyard ducks, the world. 
But see what happened to Wally? He thought he would just check it out for a while and then leave when he wanted to. But he couldn't do it. Sin is like that. Sin is a trap that has a way of changing us into people we don't want to become. Eventually, we lose touch with whom we really are, the sons and daughters of the Most High God. We become barnyard ducks. So how do we live our lives? According to verse 36, it says, Be always on the watch and pray that you may be able to escape all that is about to happen and that you may be able to stand before the Son of Man. You might say, how can I live in such a way that I am ready all the time? That doesn't seem possible. That seems overwhelming for me. It's possible, but it's not going to happen overnight or in one lump sum. It takes time and it takes patience. Patience is the key in watching for the signs, the living into the gospel, and in our daily lives as a congregation and as individuals. You know, we need to take this time of Advent as a time of reflection. Think about those things that have caused you to be separated from God and ask for for forgiveness. Think about those things that have gotten you off track with Jesus and start all over again. You know, God gives us that grace to forgive us of our sins, but we need to be open to the work of the Holy Spirit within our lives. Get rid of those non-essential things that have moved into your life that take up your valuable, productive time. You know, we need to be ready today Then the, to move on until tomorrow. We need to serve him one step at a time. As you slow down and pause for reflection, you can watch that sin does not get a foothold in your life. Watching and praying must go together. So a lesson in readiness is this. A mother was explaining to her little girl the death of her father. The mother said, God has sent for your father and will send for us, but I do not know just when. Finally, the little girl said, if we do not know just when God is to send for us, do you not think we had better pack up and get ready to go? God might send when we are not ready. What will you do this week? to become better at watching and praying? How will you live ready so that you won't have to get ready? How will the assurance of Jesus Christ help you to rise above the fearfulness of current events? You know, we must live toward this future as surely as we prepare for retirement or for even our next meal. We need to be open to the full care that God's providential future and to labor faithfully in the present. Use this time of Advent to reflect upon what it means to have Jesus born in Bethlehem and what it means to have Jesus return and bring God's kingdom on earth as a fulfillment of God's purpose for us. Live your lives in such a way that you won't be caught off guard if that day of Jesus' return would be today. Stay ready so you won't have to get ready. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word for us this morning. Lord, prepare our hearts. Prepare, prepare our lives to be ready for that day in which you will return. For, Lord, we do not know the hour, the minute, the second that you will return. But, Lord, make us ready. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 
Would you please stand for our next to the Lord in prayer. Merciful and patient God, how we must try your patience a great deal of the time. Lord, we rush through the seasons of our lives as though we had a mighty schedule to keep. We plot out our days minute by minute, but crowding each moment with tasks, stresses, and pressures. And Lord, it's no wonder that we begin to notice their growing darkness and anxiety in our lives. We find ourselves proclaiming boldly each year that we will not let ourselves get so caught up in the commercial pressures and demands. And yet, here we are, back in the same old trap of not enough time, not enough energy. The very plans we weave become bonds which imprison us. We ask this day, Lord, that you would help us bind ourselves to you, for you are our loving God. Help us to slow down and help us to reflect on the many ways in which you bless each and every one of us through each and every circumstance of our lives. And Lord, let us drink deeply of your peace. Remind us again of the most precious gift of all, the gift of loving relationship between you and your creation. And Lord, may we cherish the people and the peaceful moments you offer to us. Allow us not to take these opportunities for granted. Lord, you give us so much grace. You allow your mercy to flood through our lives. You give us the peace that we need. 
And Lord, this day, there are probably many who are on our hearts and minds who need to know of that great love and mercy and grace and peace that can only be found through you, through a relationship with you. So, Lord, this day we lift up those names that are in our hearts and minds this day and ask, Lord, that you would provide the peace, the comfort, the love, the grace, and the mercy in the lives of those who are in our hearts and minds this day. And help us to remember, Lord, that you are always with us, Emmanuel. So lift our spirits to remember you, that you offer your healing touch and your compassionate care to each and every one of us. Help us to place our trust in you this day. And once again, Lord, we pray that we would be ready for your return. So make our hearts, make our minds, and make our lives ready for that moment. For we ask all of this in Jesus' name, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who have trespassed against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. I would now ask that you please rise as we receive the um, offering. blessings and thankfulness to you. Bless these gifts and all gathered here, that we may be bearers of peace to your world. Amen. And please remain standing for our closing
Go now and walk in the light of the Lord. Stay alert, for the Lord is near. Put on the armor of light and live openly and honorably. Pray for peace for all of God's people. Go in peace. Amen. Amen.